Yo, yo, and hello, my name is Lydia, and on today's episode of my 25 pound yo-yo, we will be adding another installment to our library of Tess Holiday Lies. Now, today we'll be reviewing a recent article that she published on today.com. The title of this article reads, Tess Holiday, I was shocked as everyone when I learned I had anorexia. The world needs to understand that eating disorders don't discriminate and thinking otherwise does a dangerous disservice to people living in larger bodies. Now, I don't have a problem with the subtitle. I do agree that eating disorders don't discriminate. You can be of any size and have an eating disorder. What I do disagree with is that she has anorexia because she doesn't. And I'm gonna go through this article about um, her thoughts and feelings, and I'll say what I agree with and what I think is just utter nonsense and lies. So let's get right into it. I started using food to cope after my mother was shot when I was 10 years old. First of all, that is awful. That is really sad. And trauma can really dictate what we what habits we end up uh, developing in our lives, including our relationship with food. So that is very telling and that is very, very sad. I remember my aunt gave me a bowl of soup and I put a whole pack of crackers in the soup, little by little. And I remember how it made me feel. I started overeating. Even though I'm from the South where larger bodied individuals are more common than in some other parts of the country, my family was critical of what I ate. I started hiding food. As I got older, I struggled with anorexia. I didn't know that's what it was until last year, but for over 10 years, I have restricted food. That means I don't eat, or when I eat, it's very little, or sometimes it's one large meal a day. My dietitian, Anna Sweeney, first brought it to my attention. She told me, I'm not licensed to diagnose you, but if I could, I would diagnose you with anorexia nervosa. When she said anorexia, I laughed. I thought, do you see how fat I am? There is no way that word could ever be attached to someone my size. She referred me to a psychologist who confirmed the diagnosis. Okay, I don't know who this Anna Sweeney is and I don't know what psychologists confirm this diagnosis, but it's bullshit. Um, let's review what the criteria for anorexia nervosa is, which is exactly what she says she has. Okay. This is the clinical definition of anorexia. And note, a person must meet all of the current DSM criteria to be diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. Start with the first one. Restriction of food intake leading to weight loss or failure to gain weight resulting in a significantly low body weight of what would be expected for someone's age, sex, and height. Do we think that Tess has a significantly low body weight? The woman is like 350 pounds. I don't think so. So the first one is already not applicable. Fear of becoming fat or gaining weight. Well, I don't know what's in her head. That's true. I don't know how she feels. I just know what she posts. And she posts a lot of videos and images of her eating entire cakes, beignets, pizzas, ice cream, lots of lots of videos of um, pictures of Tess eating and a lot of pictures of her posing in her underwear and bathing suits. Now, I don't know what's in her head, um, but if what's in her head is fear of becoming fat and she's often showing off her fatness, well then the showing off of her fatness is a lie, that she's not actually that confident. I mean, she wrote a book about being a fat girl and she preaches a lot of body acceptance, um, positivity, loving herself, being comfortable in your own skin. And if this is the messaging that she's given and on the inside, she actually is fearful of being fat and gaining weight, well then all the stuff that she said is a lie. So it's either she doesn't have a fear of becoming fat and gaining weight, or she does and she's lying about this persona that she's been portraying to the public for all these years. 
And the last bullet is have a distorted view of themselves and their condition. Examples of this might include the person thinking that they are overweight when they are actually underweight or believing that they will gain weight from eating a single meal. A person with anorexia may also not believe there is a problem with being at a low body weight. These thoughts are known to professionals as distortions. Now, this is, we can't even assess this one because she didn't meet the first criteria. She's not at a significantly low body weight, so we can't say that she doesn't think there's a problem being at her low body weight because she's not at a low body weight. I don't know what sort of distortions she has. She could see something different when she looks in the mirror. I don't know what that is. The woman is already morbidly obese. Does she see more morbidly obese? I, I don't know. She's probably about 350 pounds. Does she see someone who's 600 pounds in the mirror? I don't know. Or does she look in the mirror and see a thin fit person? She might have distortions, but this last bullet, it's not applicable. So if we can review, we can read and understand, no, I'm not a doctor, but I can read these three bullets and see that Tess does not have all these three bullets. She might have the middle one, but I don't know really what's in her head. Um, but she definitely does not have a significantly low body weight. Let's go back to the article. When I shared that I had anorexia on social media last year, it blew up. I posted it on a whim, sitting on my bed where I'm sitting now. I just needed to talk about it. That's how I've always operated. I have always been as transparent and honest as I'm able to in hopes that it will help someone else feel less alone. My manager said, why didn't you tell me first? I didn't think it would be that big of a deal, but I had no idea how broken the eating disorder community is. I had no idea how few resources there are for people like me. People said that I was lying. There are people who believe I was saying this to get attention. I've had some people say, you're doing this to stay relevant. I laugh because I know it's untrue, but it's so indi indicative of what a large problem this is. I feel grateful that I'm tough enough to talk about this, but I've since taken a lot of steps backwards in my recovery. I've regressed. I haven't eaten today. It's 11 o'clock and I've had two sips of coffee and I feel sick. This has been extremely hard on my mental and physical health. Okay, I do believe that there aren't as many resources to help people with eating disorders. And I do believe we need to have a conversation about it. But this is not the eating disorder that Tess has. She cannot possibly have anorexia. And by lying about it, she is bringing attention on herself, but it's not the right type of attention. And it's going to distract from the actual people that do have this problem. You're inventing a problem that doesn't exist. That's why there's no resources for your problem. There are resources available for the real problem you have, which is binge eating. Talk about that. Talk about the real problem tests. There are resources available. Get that conversation going. Get more resources. Draw more attention to the mental health associated with binge eating because that is the real problem that is at play here. I chose to share my diagnosis because it's not about the desire for thinness. I'm not restricting because I want to be thin. I've just done this for so long. I wish I could tell you that I'm good at feeding my body, but I'm not. I tell myself, oh, I'll eat later, but I didn't realize that by not eating, I was starving my body. Your body just holds on to whatever food it can because it doesn't know when you're going to feed it again. I still struggled with wrapping my head around, how can I be in a fat body and be starving? Then I realized that bodies of all sizes and shapes starve. Editor's note, it is a myth that anorexia only occurs in patients who have extremely low body weights. A typical anorexia nervosa is a restrictive eating disorder that occurs in patients whose body weight is at or above normal, and experts say it is under-recognized. Okay, a lot to unpack here. Let me actually start at the bottom with atypical anorexia, okay? So an atypical anorexia is very similar to uh, anorexia nervosa, except it doesn't require the extremely low body weight. So, a typical anorexia is presented with a weight status in a range traditionally considered to be healthy. So that's a BMI between 18 and a half and 24.9 at the time of seeking treatment. Although I have heard you can also be above this range. Had experienced a greater drop in BMI. 
had been ill for about 10 months longer, had eating disorders that were just as severe in terms of common symptoms, rates of amenorrhea, and number of reported physical symptoms. Okay, starting at the top. Her BMI is not in the healthy range, it's way above it. But let's say typical um, anorexia can occur in people with even higher BMIs. We need to experience a drop in BMI. So what they're saying here is that the trajectory of someone experiencing atypical, um, atypical anorexia means that they could be on a trajectory to getting anorexia nervosa, but they haven't lost that amount of weight yet. Someone that maybe went from a BMI of 40 to 30 in a very, very short amount of time, so losing weight using very unhealthy starvation type of methods, yes, they could be anorexic um, and have to be ill for 10 months or longer. Now, restricting your food intake for a day, a couple days, even a week, is disordered, but it's not an eating disorder. It's disordered eating, but it's not an eating disorder. There are many people that routinely fast. Hello, intermittent fasting is a way a lot of people eat, and that is eating during a certain window. Sometimes with intermittent fasting, people don't eat for a couple days in their week. They'll have two full days where they don't eat at all, and then the other days they eat, or they do OMAD, one meal a day, which is what Tess was saying that she sometimes does. Some people eat like that. They restrict the window in which they eat, but that's not an eating disorder. It's, it's a pattern in which they eat. Some people can argue that it's not a healthy pattern or, it, or it's disordered in some way, but it's not anorexia. Just because you restrict at some points does not mean you, you are anorexic. You would be anorexic if you were restricting to the point that you dropped a lot of weight in a short period of time. This is not happening. If we look at pictures of Tess from 2011 to now, she's been gaining weight. She's gained at least 100 pounds, okay? You cannot be gaining weight and have anorexia. That is impossible. So that's my first problem with, with that, that, that piece. So she doesn't have anorexia nervosa and she doesn't have atypical anorexia. Now, the other part, which now I'm going to dive back into the definition of anorexia, where I can now debunk the middle part, was this. I'm not restricting because I want to be thin, okay? So she's not restricting because she wants to be thin, but she's not good at feeding her body. She says, oh, I'll eat later. And then she didn't realize that by not eating, she was starving herself. I'll address the starving part after. Um, so not because she wants to be thin. Criteria for anorexia, fear of becoming fat or gaining weight. That is the reason why anorexic people don't eat. Fear of becoming fat and gaining weight. But if she's saying that she's doing this, not restricting because I want to be thin, then her reasons for restricting are not anorexic. It's not. It's I'm too busy to eat. A lot of people have this problem. A lot of people fall into this. Oh, I didn't have time. I'll, I just have to grab something quick. I, I forgot to eat at the end of the day. I don't feel well. Oh, I forgot to eat. Yes, it's something that involves more planning. Yeah, talk to your therapist. Be, be more organized. Make sure that you do fuel your body when you need to fuel it. It's not anorexia, though. So now, Tess, thank you for this, because now you've debunked all of the criteria. So we're not at a low weight. We can't have a distorted view of ourselves because we're not at the, that low weight and we don't have a fear of becoming fat. So you have none of the criteria now, none. So you do not have anorexia nervosa. Now the other one I wanted to talk about is this lie. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't realize that by not eating I was starving my body. Your body just holds on to whatever food it can because it doesn't know when you're going to feed it again. Oh my God, this has been debunked so many times. This is that whole starvation mode saying, oh, if you're eating too little, you'll gain weight. That is bullshit, bullshit. It, that's not how it works. People get mixed up with the whole uh, metabolic adaptation thing, meaning that as you lose weight, your body needs fewer calories to maintain the lower body size. So therefore um, your metabolism has slowed down. Okay, it's metabolic adaptation. If I start off at 300 pounds and I need to eat 3,000 calories a day to maintain 300 pounds and I go down to 200 pounds and now I need 2,000 calories a day to maintain my weight, it doesn't mean my metabolism is broken because I can't eat the other 1,000 calories. 
it means if I eat the other thousand calories, I'll go back up to 300 pounds. It's just, it's metabolic adaptation. It's not starvation mode. It's not my body holding on to everything because I'm not giving it enough food. It just means my body requires less food. You do not gain weight from not eating. That's bullshit. There are actual people that are starving, real people in countries that have food deserts that are starving. How dare you say that you're starving? You're not. You're restricting your calories for a day or a few hours and you didn't eat and that's not good. And yes, you need to plan better, but you're not starving. Please don't tell all the fat people that the reason why they're fat is because they're starving themselves. That is not true. They are fat because they are binging. Let's continue. So many people who are in larger bodies have messaged me and said, I never thought I restricted until you started talking about this. It's been very empowering, but it's also made me incredibly sad. To get a diagnosis when there is so much weight bias and stigma in the medical industry is difficult. It's tough when you hear the word anorexia and it's only equated with one kind of image. It's detrimental to so many people, including myself. The reason why it is only associated with one kind of image is because anorexia nervosa, which is the anorexia that you claim to have, is only associated with one kind of image because the first bullet of the criteria is extremely low body weight. That is the criteria. So that is why obese people are not shown for a, um, anorexia nervosa. Now, I agree, the conversation around atypical anorexia probably should be bigger. We probably should be talking about atypical anorexia. That way we don't get as many people that end up developing anorexia nervosa. I agree. But honey, you don't have the other one either. That's not your disorder. If it was, you would be a lot smaller than you are right now. Recovery for me is messy. It's lonely. It's hard to deal with something for which there isn't enough support. Having a diagnosis has been liberating and it has made me feel less alone. But the confused look on people's faces I say when anorexia, when I say anorexia or the stares I get, if it comes up in conversation, that's hard. I remind myself that my feelings are valid. I go to therapy. Talking about it has helped. I surround myself with people who can gently say, have you eaten today? Or let's have a protein shake. I make sure I have things in my house that are easy to grab and eat. Moving my body makes it easier for me to feed myself because it makes it harder to ignore the feelings of hunger. Okay. I understand that she has a problem with restricting and it is a good idea to have um, reminders to eat more during the day because that will prevent the binge. But the conversation that she is wanting to get going is not the right conversation. I think that this is more indicative of the conversation that she should be having because this is probably closer to what she's experiencing. She's talking about this part here in the restrict binge cycle, the restrictive part. So she restricts, she doesn't eat, or she'll say, I'll eat later. So she's restricting, she's restricting, she's restricting. And then she has these feelings of hunger and cravings. But she's, this is all that she's talking about. She doesn't talk about what happens next, which is this, the binge. So she restricts herself to the point of binging. And then she binges and then she feels the guilt and shame and anxiety. Then she experiences a desire to lose weight and then she starts restricting again. And we do the cycle over and over again. She's only talking about this part of the cycle. I want her to talk about this part, the whole picture. So many people can relate to you, Tess, so many people. Why are you only choosing to talk about this? Because you feel that this part is too shameful, that you can't admit to it? If you pride yourself on getting conversations going, you pride yourself on valuing mental health, then get off your high horse and admit to this part. You can do a whole lot of good if you just admit to this part and start talking about what happens here. What happens with the binging? That would do a lot of good for a lot of people. There is no space for people who are in larger bodies to ever exist in the world where we aren't being told that we need to lose weight or change our bodies. January is an extremely hard time because it starts with the diet talk and the new year, new you messaging. Then it migrates into getting your body ready for summer. It never ends, and fat people are more aware of this messaging than anyone because it's shouted at us from the moment we present as fat in the world. 
For folks who claim they actually care about fat bodies and plus size people and want to help us, the way you can help us is by supporting our mental health and by understanding that there are so many people struggling with what I'm struggling with, but they don't know it and they can't name it and they can't get a diagnosis because our system has never been set up to support folks in larger bodies. And to people who are struggling, I say to find support. One of the bright spots that came from COVID-19 has been increased access to mental health professionals online. I found someone to talk to through just Googling someone in my area. I literally would not have been able to do any of this if I didn't have that help. Now, I will say that this is true. We, we do need more resources. And I do think that mental illness plays a big role in people's body sizes, people that um, are overweight or underweight, or even at average weight, their eating habits uh, could be the result of poor mental health. And that does require attention. I just wish that Tess was drawing attention to the real eating disorder that she has, binge eating disorder, because that needs more attention. I'm so, so upset that she's still propagating this lie about anorexia and the thought of having a whole army of obese people now claiming that they have anorexia, just like Tess, and that's the reason why that they are overweight instead of actually learning and addressing the real problem, which is the overeating and binging, which is causing them to be overweight. Now they're just gonna be blaming this made up thing that doesn't exist. No, there's no support for obese people with anorexia because there aren't any. And if there are, they have atypical anorexia and they are the ones that have actually starved themselves to a point where they have dropped a significant amount of weight. Yes, obese people can die of starvation, but it doesn't happen by restricting food for a few hours or a few days or even a few weeks. This is a long-term health condition. If someone is starving themselves and not eating for months and months at a time, that is anorexia. This I didn't eat today, or even trying to frame it like, I'm not even doing it out of thinness, I just forgot. Well, in order to make yourself look so body positive that you don't care about thinness, you're actually bringing yourself farther and farther away from the definition of anorexia. You see, you can't have it both ways. You want so badly to have that diagnosis of, no, it's a real thing. I have the skinny person's disease, but I'm fat. I have anorexia. You want, you're clinging to that so badly, but you can't let go of your body positive um, fat acceptance messaging. So you're trying to straddle both lines, but guess what? You're disingenuous to both. But alas, this is my 25 pound yo-yo and not Tess Holiday is lying again. So until next time, yo-yo and let's go.